Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the construction of three phase induction motor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive, link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic, construction of three phase induction motor. This induction motor is consist of two important two main parts are available. The first one is the stationary part called a stator. Stator is a stationary part in which the three phase winding is placed. Stator is a stationary part in that stator windings are available. The rotating part is called a rotor which is connected to the mechanical load through the shaft. The load is connected through the rotor. This rotor also having the winding or copper bars. So, mainly we have the two parts stationary part stator and rotating part rotor. Now, we will see the diagram. So, this is the overview of the three phase induction motor. So, this is the outer part is the stator. This portion is nothing but a stator slot. The cop the windings are placed in the in the places these slots. The slots are provided for placing the winding stator winding. So, this inner part is the rotor rotating part through which the load is connected. This is the shaft. This rotor is placed in the shaft. So, here also the slots available the copper winding or copper bars are placed in the rotor. So, the stationary part stator having the stator winding the rotating part rotor that also having the copper winding or copper bar this rotor is placed in the shaft the load is connected through the connected to the load through the shaft. Now, we will see the description it has laminated construction made of stamping which is our 0.4 to 0.5 millimeter thickness. It is a laminated. This iron core is a highly laminated in order to avoid the eddy current loss. So, so it, is, it is not a single piece. The n number of thin sheets are combined together, laminated and combined together with a thickness of 0.4 to 0.5 millimeter thickness. The stamping have the slot on the inner periphery to place the stator winding. So, this is nothing but a this is a core laminated core. The slots are available in that slot only the stator winding is placed. The stamping is made up of silicon steel. It is made up of a silicon steel that is fully laminated. The number of stampings are stamped together to form the stator. Like a paper n number of stampings available all these stampings are laminated and compressed pressed together to form the stator it is not a single piece a number of thin sheets available that are combined together to form the stator laminated silicon steel stamping minimize the eddy current loss so why we are going for lamination and why we are going for stamping means in order to reduce the eddy current loss the stator core consists of three phase winding connected in either star or delta are called a stator winding. So, the stator core having the winding in a connected in either in star connection or delta connection that is called a stator winding. The stator winding is excited by the three phase supply to produce the rotating magnetic field. So, the stator winding is connected to the three phase supply. So, it will produce the rotating magnetic field. Rotor is placed inside the stator. The, just now we discussed the diagram. The rotor is available inside. So, it is laminated and slots on the outer periphery to carry the rotor winding or rotor conductors. So, this rotor also having the slots that are also laminated and also having the slot. In that slot, the rotor winding or rotor conductors are placed. So, it is made up of a cast iron. There are two type of rotor construction available. The rotor there are two types one is the screw gauge rotor another one slip ring induction motor or face wound rotor. So, this screw gauge means the copper bars are available. Slip ring means the separate winding is available that is a major difference. So, this one can be modified this windings are more. this is permanent the copper why copper bars are permanently placed in the rotor. So, that there are majorly two types screw gauge rotor 
slip ring, induction motor or phase 1 rotor. First we will see the screw gauge rotor. So, this is a rotor. So, this, this is nothing but a copper bar. These lines are nothing but copper bar. Copper bars are permanently placed. So, that will act as a copper winding or uh, act as a rotor winding or rotor conductor. So, we cannot modify. During the construction itself, the copper bars are permanently placed. But in case of slip ring, we can add some external resistance. We can modify the winding also. But this is permanently placed. So, there is no modification can be done in this type, screw gauge rotor. Now, we will see the construction. It consists of cylindrical laminated core. So, this is cylindrical, it is like a cylindrical laminated core with the slots to place the rotor conductor, which are nearly parallel to the shaft axis or skewed. Skewed means slightly it is having the inclination, it is not a straight line, in inclined. Right. So, there are lot of advantage available to place the rotor conductors in a skewed manner. Right. So, here it is the laminated core slots are available in the rotor conductors are placed in a skewed manner. The rotor conductors are not wires, but the bar of copper or aluminum or alloy. This is not a wire. So, copper bars are permanently placed in the slots. One bar is placed in each slot each slot having one slot, one, one bar. At the end of the rotor, the rotor bar conductors and short circuited by heavy end, heavy end rings. So, all the copper bars are short circuited by using the end ring. Since the rotor bars are permanently short circuited, it is not possible to add external resistance. So, I already told in the second type, we can add the external resistance. In first type, the copper bars are permanently placed. So, not possible to modify the resistance, not possible to add any resistance in series with the rotor for starting purpose. During the starting, if you add the resistor, the motor will take the less current. We can, so we can reduce the starting current, but that is not possible in case of this screw gauge rotor. So, the rotor is skewed because we already told it is not a straight line, it is a skewed because there are two different purposes available. It helps the motor to run quickly with reduced noise. The noise is reduced. Reduces locking tendency of rotor. The locking between stator and rotor is reduced because of skewed. skewed. If it is placed in a straight line or normal line, there may be a possibility of locking. If this skewed means there is a some phase difference will happen between stator and rotor. So, that reducing the locking tendency that is rotor teeth remains under the stator teeth due to the magnetic attraction between the two. There is a we can avoid the locking, locking of uh, between the stator and rotor. Now, we will go to the second type slip ring rotor or phase wound rotor. So, in the slip ring rotor or phase 1 rotor, separate windings are available for the rotor. So, this is the stator. Consider this is the stator. Three phase supply is given to the stator. So, we have the rotor available here. Rotor is available. That also it is connected in a star. Star connected. So, that is connected to the slip ring. So, these are the windings. The brushes are available. Through the brushes, the supply is given to the rotor windings. Right. So, this is shaft. Shaft is available. So, this shaded portion is the brush. This portion is nothing but a slip ring. Right. So, the windings are placed in a rotor. In a previous case, the copper bar or aluminum or alloy bar available permanently. But here, the windings are placed. The supply to the winding is given through the slip ring and brushes. So, the other end, we can easily add the resistor. So, this is the external resistance. Right. So, it is, it, is, it is in a maximum resistance position. The resistance is maximum so that current taken by the motor is very lesser. Thereafter, we can slowly reduce the resistor so that the current, current increases gradually so that voltage and speed also increases gradually. So, it is possible to add the external resistance in, the, in this type slip ring rotor or phase 1 rotor. This external resistor are used to limit the starting current that is the main purpose. So, this facility available in the slip ring or phase 1 rotor that is not possible in the screw gauge rotor. Now, we will see the description. 
So it is in this rotor winding is similar to the stator. Stator and rotor windings are similar. Rotor carries three phase star or delta connected winding. Either star connector or delta connected windings are available. These windings are placed in slot in rotor is placed in the slot. One end of all windings are connected to the common place. The other ends, other end of three phase windings are brought out and connected to the slip ring mounted on the shaft with the brass on them. So one end is connected commonly, another end is connected through the slip ring and brasses. So that is available here. So this is a three phase winding, star connected winding. In this diagram, star connected windings are available. So the one end is connected commonly. One end of all three phases are connected. So this is a common point. The other end is connected to this, connected to through the, the brass and slip ring. Okay, that is given here. One end is connected commonly, another end is connected through the brass and the slip ring. The, these brasses are then externally connected to the three phase star connected rheostat. The external resistance are connected, and other end is connected through the rheostat. Why we are connecting this rheostat? The use of brass, slip ring, and external resistor is to increase the starting torque and decrease the starting current while adding the resistance it is we can increase the torque because initially the torque the to starting torque will be more right this will be this purely depends upon the resistance value when the resistance is more the torque also more and reduce the starting current so do you, and by slowly decreasing the resistor value we can slowly increase the voltage applied and current taken so that it is possible to go for a speed control of the motor right the initially the resistor is in the maximum resistance position so the current taken is very lesser by slowly reducing the resistance we can increase the current applied to the current taken by the motor voltage applied to the motor so that we can control the speed of the motor now we'll compare this cruel gauge rotor and slip ring or phase 1 rotor the comparison we will we will see the comparison so here we will see the scroll gauge rotor and slip ring or phase 1 rotor so in the scroll gauge rotor the rotor consists of bar of copper copper bars available but here three phase winding is available in slip ring we have three phase winding the construction is simple during the construction is itself the copper bars are placed there is no more alteration but here construction is complicated because we need to place the three phase winding. So because of this copper bar, the resistance cannot be added. But here we can add the resistor. Externally, we can add the resistor. So there is no slip ring and brush. But here, because of three phase winding, in order to get the supply, we need a slip ring and brushes are available. Right? So due to this, the rotor is cheap. There is during the construction itself, the copper bars are placed so it is a cheap but here it is costly because we need to place the winding the moderate starting torque here but here high starting torque why initially we added the resistor so the torque is proportional to resistance value initially the resistor is very high so that we get the high starting torque so due to this starting torque and external resistors available here but it's not available here speed control is not possible by adding the external rheostat since the rotor is short circuited the main advantage is here is we can go for a speed control by adding the external rheostat is possible that is not possible in the scroll gauge rotor rotor copper loss is less and the so that high efficiency so because here there is no copper winding, copper bars only available. So automatically the loss due to the copper is lesser. So that we can get the more efficiency. But this rotor is copper loss is more because the copper winding is available. Here copper bars are available. So we will get the less efficiency compared to the scroll gauge rotor. So it is mainly used in the lathe, drilling, fan, blower, water pump, grinder, and printing machines where we need the moderate torque is required this one having high st high starting torque so used in the lift lift and hoist so these two are and crane this and elevator compressor these are all 
uh, uh, started with the loaded condition. So, we need definitely we need the high starting torque. Lift means already the, the passengers are available. So, lift hoist means the load is available. So, for that case, we are using this slip ring, uh, index slip ring or phase 1 rotor having the high starting torque. So, in this video, we discuss about the construction of three phase induction motor, stator and rotor, main part is stator and rotor, rotor again having two types, scroll gauge rotor and slip ring rotor, the construction we discuss and also we discuss the comparison between scroll gauge and slip ring rotor. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification, soft copy of this material available in the drive, link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.